the demand, um, it looks like there's no end in sight for demand. How many um, ETF products do you think this market can handle? Sure. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. Um, it's definitely an exciting time. I do think that actually the market can handle a lot of different issuers products and we very much welcome the competition. Um, obviously, we're coming in second to market here, uh, but we're very excited and um, again, wish our competition luck and excited to be here. Well, on that note, too, explain the product itself a little more, because why buy an ETF for futures when you can buy, for example, the Bitcoin trust that is trading at a discount and risk the roll fees that are associated with the futures product? Sure, I think that's a very good question and actually addresses quite a few different concerns that people have. One, you know, why choose a fund over owning Bitcoin directly? Two, there's the legacy product of GBTC. How is the ETF structure better? And maybe three, you know, why is a futures-based ETF better than a physically backed? I'll start with your first question about roll costs. You know, uh, on that, we do plan on rolling into the next month's futures contrast as efficiently as possible. And we do believe that our team's deep expertise in this market does give us an edge over the other offerings. Um, and again, you know, why, why own, uh, choose this fund over owning Bitcoin directly when it's um, easy enough in the U.S.? Again, you know, Bitcoin is not a regulated asset in the U.S., but CME futures are. There's more efficient price discovery, and it does satisfy concerns around wash trading and inaccurate data. And lastly, right, there's no need to worry about risks around security and custody and the full faith of an SEC-regulated NASDAQ-traded ETF. Well, you know, one concern I have is that I look at other futures ETFs. I look at USO, for example, and it's